think a lot of that's got to do, they call it the AAE. And I get lost in a lot of this stuff because I don't retain well anymore because of all the fun that I had when I was younger. <laughs> I had a lot of fun, and, and now I'm paying the bill for that one. But the, it's uh, agriculture. God, there's so much of it. It's, they're cleaning the water. Yeah. And it's all about filtering the water, and they'll move it from this area to this area to this area to this area, and it filters out. And the okay. the end run is it's supposed to go through the Everglades and down out through Flamingo, the south, the tip of Florida, yeah. into Florida Bay, because that's the Everglades got to have so much fresh water. They can't. Everyone thinks it's just salt water, and it's not. It has to have that like a balance. That, there is a balance, and it's yeah. nature's balance. And that balance has been, it's, there's, oh, it's been destroyed. There's so much, dude. I used to, I was a Southeast regional director for the Snook and Game Fish Foundation for 10 years. Yeah. And why I, what, probably because of, blah, 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 blah. yeah. Cause it, it, you know, I'd get a phone call and say, can you go to Tallahassee this week? I'm like, for what? Just send me some paperwork. And they'd, they basically would hand me scripts and go, here, just get up on the podium and bitch these guys out about this. And, that was and I'd like get up there and say, Congress. you guys are killing in Tallahassee and, you know, yeah. around the heavy hitters and go in during open statement stuff and just say, you guys are killing the Everglades. Yeah. And I'm a fishing guide. And this is how we make our living off these Everglades. Yeah. Because in the state of Florida, there's probably... 5,000 fish. Notice how I just bounce around all over the place, guys. Like I said, it started to pay off all that fun. Um, <clears throat> the fishing guide, the fi look, when the fish are gone, fishing yeah. guides are out of business. Oh, yeah. Your revenue that you're bringing in from a lot of these people that come here and spend, if I'm correct, I don't, we'd have, you could look it up. Yeah. The state of Florida, like this year, the fishing, the recreational fishing industry in Florida this year is probably billion, two billion, three bill, billion dollars. Oh, yeah. That's a lot of money. That's a lot of tax dollars that get put back into your hotels, your restaurants. Yeah, it, fishing keeps Florida even, going. It's even beyond that. Like the fish, the fish gone, it destroys the ecosystems and everything. I mean, it's going to destroy more than just that one industry. It'll it'll crush. Well, it just, yeah, well, it just starts walking through everything that the, oh, yeah. the state of Florida is all about. Yeah. You know, people like Disney, yeah, hey, fun place to go visit if you got a kid. Yeah. But when someone says, Danny, what's your, what's your take on Disney? And I'm like, Disney killed Florida. And they're like, what? Disney killed Florida. If you look where Disneyland is built, that was the northern end of the Everglades system. That's where it started. Yeah. That's where the watershed starts. And that's what this week when I drove over to Sop Choppy and was driving through the middle of the state with all those natural rivers and everything's just natural swamp. Yeah. That water ran south. They built Disney. They built all the hotels, the highways, everything around it that goes with Disney is that sitting on top of that watershed. And when it rains... All that nasty stuff from all the cars, from all the just the pollutions, the it litter, down into it the all swamp. ends up in that in them in them rivers and canals. Yeah, and then it goes into the Kissimmee River and it works its way into Lake Okeechobee, which works its way down south and through the Everglades. Yeah, but there's a there's there's just so many issues when you I shouldn't have brought up the Everglades because then there's big sugar. Yeah, and if you look at the maps, if you Google Earth Lake Okeechobee and you look at the south end of the lake, you'll see all the big green area, all the squares. Mm -hmm. That's all sugar. Yeah. Well, lake Okeechobee, it's like the, the bowl of water. Yeah. And now you've built this barrier. Yeah. Because the water's not allowed to flow through. And basically, when it came to the fight to fix the Everglades, to save the Everglades, sugar owns Florida. Yeah. All right. Sugar owns Florida. Don't let nobody tell you no different. And they're brutal. The money, it's nuts. And where you've downtown, that's I don't even want to I don't even want to mention the name of the building and the people who own it. Oh no, yeah. You I know, mean the sugar I've, I've been building. In a couple of the, uh, I've been in a couple of protests regarding mm -hmm. them. Mm -hmm. <laughs> and um, one them boys was, are heavy hitters. Oh yeah. One was for and and on top of that, there's no they have all the power. So it's like these are people essentially just screaming at them because 
nothing's going to change. You know what I mean? Like, unless like, well, they'll let you actually, scream. They yeah. will let us go up and scream and holler oh, yeah. and print. They looking out them windows, smoking cigars, just going well, peasants. Well, one was for the, uh, so because Wellington is on the east side of, of those fields, they stopped burning a certain, they stopped burning in certain ways to avoid having the smoke go into Wellington. So now all that smoke double the smoke because mm-hmm. it was flowing in different directions. Mm-hmm. Now all goes into like Bell Glade, Clewiston, all those areas. It all So goes they're into... burning on different wind directions. Yeah. When I was a kid growing up right there by Palm Beach International Airport, yeah, you'd see the, in that the neighborhood, it would just rain yeah. ash. Well, now, now imagine all of that times two because they were still burning in the other direction too. Mm-hmm. Imagine all of that now just dumping onto like a few towns. That are right next to it. Mm-hmm. That's what's happening. And now you have people getting cancer and all these other things out mm-hmm. there. And that was one of the protests I was at because they were like, how is this even like a thing? And then they started, there's other types of, uh, there's other types of way of, of agricultural techniques that they could implement to stop. There's that. so much more they could do and oh, they yeah. got the money to do it. Oh yeah. The thing is they don't want to spend the money to yeah, do it. Cause if it costs them three, 4% of a uh, profit, which Obviously, sounds like nothing. <laughs> you know, it can get rid and of that it problem. Is, but it, it really is nothing, and yeah. it's a right, it'd be a write-off for them. Oh yeah, one hundred. They probably get tax credits. They could probably lobby for tax credits. Oh my credits god, the money they get, the subsidies. Oh yeah. It's if you really, if you, and for those of you listening, watching the show here, if you went and started doing your research on it into Big Sugar in Florida, the subsidies they're giving money, unbelievable amounts of money, and I'm like, wait a minute. You know, here's, look, here's how I look at sugar. Sugar is poison. Sugar has killed more people than cocaine, oh, yeah. heroin, marijuana. Well, marijuana, I don't think ever really killed anybody. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Maybe a dumb guy fell asleep at a red light or something. <laughs> but, but sugar, it's the worst. Yeah. The diabetes. And it's more addictive than cocaine. <laughs> and if you look, it's twice as addictive as yeah. cocaine. And that's why half of this country... God, probably more than that. It's like 50% of people are uh, pre-diabetic or diabetic. And it's from the sugar. Oh, yeah. You walk into a store, you look at the package, and it's like beef jerky. Yeah. And you look on the back, sugar. Why'd you put sugar in beef jerky? It's... Yeah. In the in the in hamburger buns. Everything. In, in, our, in the bread, there's sugar. Mm-hmm. It's just like corn subsidies out in the Midwest. In the Midwest, you wonder why high fructose corn syrup is in everything. It's because the the corn uh industry the gets lobby so oh yeah oh yeah it's, they get so Which many is... subsidies and they need to justify why they're getting those subsidies still mm-hmm. so they take all that corn and they turn it into feed they turn it into everything they turn it into high fructose corn syrup that goes in every soda in america basically unless they mm-hmm. go out of their way to make it without it it goes into all that and high fructose corn syrup it's somehow like 10 times more fucking deadly than actual sugar Really? So it's like now I'm learning it's causing, today, boy. yeah. Now it's causing all these like different neurological effects. It, it has uh, it, diabetes, insulin response, all that. It's worse than sugar itself. What? So it's like the sugar industry is terrible here, and then it's the same thing anywhere because all those subsidies go to all these different agricultural industries. And then we scream about it and we holler about it. Yeah. And those big corporations, every year and every season, it's coming up now. They're just cutting big checks oh yeah to all those politicians oh yeah and the politicians that's why the shit never gets fixed you wonder what the fuck's going on it's like shit can't get fixed we can't afford yeah if we pulled all our money us little guys we cannot out money them guys and it's all about the money and that's why when you hear me say big sugar owns florida they do there's so much of it goes into tallahassee boy And, and the problem is beyond that the the money like the corruption has been fully legalized and read and redefined so it's like now it's called lobbying now it's called which is that's now it's, and like lobbying is just bribes it's bribe it's, it's bribes. just another word and not for only bribery. was it legalized it was legalized through the supreme court so now the only body that could actually legislate it is and the, undo is it the, is would the federal be. the federal congress because, yeah, that's not gonna happen yeah exactly and not even not even like the president could sign an executive order to undo it because the only thing, the only power the president would have Mm -hmm. is to uh, reveal the donors and the dark money. That's the only power the president could have over it is just to reveal for transparency. But outside of that, the president would be useless to do that. I don't, that's like, well, exactly. I mean like, and this isn't even to get into ideological preferences or any of that. 
But like, for instance, when you look in 2016 with Bernie Sanders, right? He mm -hmm. didn't take any lobbying. He only took grassroots. He raised like $600 million. He was the that most successful. That man raised some serious cash. Average, average donation, 27 bucks. Mm -hmm. You know what I mean? And when I would, it would take a person like him to do it. You know, he's, he's a social Democrat. You might have a populist on the right side that would do something like that. But like, if you look at, you know, Trump, his entire uh, commencement address in 2016, that that's a donation pool as well. He got like millions of dollars from like different uh, corporations, whatever it is. And it doesn't matter. So I, doesn't that's matter. why I look now. They the go, what people? side? And I go, it doesn't matter yeah. what side. They're, it's all one side. They're yeah. all taking the money. The same people donate to Biden. The mm -hmm. same people donated to Obama. You know mm -hmm. what I mean? It's like people don't realize you have the facade of like red and blue. But in reality, the only no, no, thing, no, no, the no, only they thing will, that matters is, they'll give is the, the money. They'll give to the Democrat. They'll give to the oh, Republican. Yeah. Everybody gets a share because they're sitting on this side of the fence going, we don't want either of these guys pissed at us because we're not sure who's going to be running the show. Yeah. Nor do you they know? care as long as the laws don't change. It's, there you go. Just because you'll leave real... things like they are, I'm good with it. Yeah. Oh, Which yeah, 100%. Fucking, oh, it's so wrong. You know, and it's like... Where'd we go fucking wrong, yeah. you know? And, and this has been happening <laughs> since the 70s. You know, in the 70s, they started loosening campaign uh, fundraising. Mm -hmm. And then in 2009, that's when Citizens United happened. And that just opened the floodgates. And then they revisited it decided it wasn't enough and then they let dark money super PACs come into play where it's like instead of like you're capping out a few hundred million let's say there's only so many pools of, of places you can get that type of money from in those types of don, uh, denominations citizens united made it to where it's like if you're a billionaire and you want to donate a billion dollars to the the republican or democratic parties God, how do you where's it's, it's on where's the fairness how do you play fair with yeah. that and then how do you expect these politicians to actually represent their constituents because you're bought and paid for their constituents aren't you uh -uh. you're putting them in there but their constituents are <laughs> that the, guy the 50 that just cut me that, that check just for like, a billion dollars yeah like the pharmaceutical industry 2018 they donated over a billion dollars to both parties 2018 their profit margin they made 69 billion dollars in profit and it and they had opioid crisis going on they had all these different scandals going on it was a return on investment because if they pay a few billion in fines then they pay a uh, billion dollars to lobby the politicians, mm -hmm. and most of their most of their research and development is taxpayer subsidized. So, like diabetes there medication, we the, there we was are with the subsidies. By, yeah, the diabetes uh, medication was created by the government. You know, people don't realize that the internet created by the government. Like all these different innovations that we pride ourselves on as private this, private that, they were all government made. Mm -hmm. You know what I mean? And people mm -hmm. don't realize that, and then it's sold off for nothing because of the lobbying. So it's like. You know, cancer medication. It's it's research developed by the government through universities. And then the patents are sold to companies for like, you know, let's say a 10 million bucks, 20 million bucks, whatever it is. Those companies then proceed to pri like lock out the market and you can't recreate That's it. That's it. They throw a wall can't up and recreate go, here's it. what we're going to charge yeah. you for it. And I'm like, are you out of your mind? Yeah. And then they go into uh, the courts. They lobby these judges and everything like that through other means. To where when the and lawsuits then, start. Well, the lawsuits and the patents. Because the patents expire after so long. But then they keep them up. Like Disney, yeah. it took over 100 years for the Mickey Mouse fucking logo to become public domain. Way after the fact. Way after it um, should have been. Mm -hmm. That's just a Disney logo. These, these medications takes 20, 30 years for them to go generic and they fight tooth and nail to make sure it lasts as long as possible in their control only before they can be made into generic drugs. Profit. Yeah. It's all about profit. And then they increase 3% a year, 5% a year. And then over the course of like 20, 30 years, the medications have gone up 50, 60%. Mm -hmm. And when you look at like income, like income, wealth, inequality, all these different things, the American people haven't gotten like a real bump it adjusted for inflation and everything in, in over 50 years. Mm -hmm. It's been minimum wage 725 for like 20 some Forever. odd years. Ever. And, and it's and like, that's wrong. And like, let's, good luck surviving on 725. You'd have to it's work, not gonna you'd have to work 24 hours a day there was, to I, pay rent. I was watching a kid the other day on TV talking. Kid says, dude, I got three jobs and yeah. I can't afford to get a house. Yeah. And Whatever it, happened to this American dream thing? And yeah. I'm like, you're on to something here, buddy. You know, yeah. I mean, you're working your ass off and you can't, 
it just there's no balance. Yeah. Everything just went one way. Yeah. And it's away from everyone. I don't care which side you're yeah. on either. It, you, it doesn't matter what you side have, you're. You everybody. Have top point one percent private equity. They own everything. Mm-hmm. And it, and when you look back in the day, you know, you go back to the 1950s. Why was the tax code for the top point one percent like 99 percent? It was to avoid that type of concentration of wealth. When it wasn't that for the uh, lower class people, the middle class people, those were the times we built the middle class in the country. Mm-hmm. It was because of uh, essentially anti like monopolistic laws that were in place and uh, utilized by the government. Those things, even though they're still on the books, they're gone. We don't put in it's the not, right. There's no one. They don't enforce anything. No. There's nothing's being. No. Nothing's being enforced. For just my opinions, because all I do is just voice opinion. That's all. Yeah. I do. And I look and I go. Nothing they're doing helps your no. average American, no. period. Not at all. You know, your average Joe that's busting his ass, got the kid, got the wife, or the single mom, you know what? You're going to give her food stamps? That's that's chump. I look at it and I go, that's chump change. Yeah. And you As wanna, hard as we work. Yeah, and you want to know who cut all the uh, social programs that were in the 1980s, 70s, 60s? You want to know who cut them? It was the Democrats with Bill Clinton. He in the when he passed the ninety four crime bill that quadrupled the po- prison population in the United States in the same breath he also eliminated all the social programs that existed in the second half of the nineteenth century and I was old enough then that should have been able to understand it but I didn't no because that's because when because those years ease. I was partying dude yeah, was, but yeah. it's legalese like like you have to fully study politics like mm-hmm. in order to understand just what's going on in the news to understand what's real and what's not you have to actually study it. And no average person should be required to, be able to study to, weed it to that it. extent. It's it's insane, but they do it on purpose because when it's overcomplicated, you have no idea. Your what average they're Joe, at. yeah. Why why should the average person just know politics to to essentially like a bachelor's level in order to get what's happening? No average person should have you shouldn't to. have it to. should be pretty black and white with what's going it on it should be transparent yeah it's just look just be honest with yeah. me instead they have if a you're gonna screw that, me just tell me yeah. that way i know whether to enjoy it or not you know yeah. one way no, or exactly. what to do about no, it there's no lube and you're getting surprised that's, like, that's, that's, that's it. how it is now there is oh, yeah. no more no hey look here's what we're gonna do and it's gonna well everybody's gonna tell you everything they want you to hear yeah and that's especially like during election years you know look i'm 64 years old i've seen a lot of this stuff I've, I've seen a lot of elections, you know, a lot of and I've seen promises. a <laughs> lot of promises and promises and promises. And it's just, you might keep one or two of them, but there's no. not many of them. And it's going to be keep... the small ones. They're, they're crumbs. You know what I mean? Like, for instance, people don't realize in terms of like how long some of these debates have gone on. People don't realize years, that years and, and they're still going on. Oh, the debate. So universal healthcare, that has been a widely debated and it's statistically proven it will make things better for everyone. It will be anti-inflationary because we have how much we spend privately. When it comes to that debate, it's been going on since like 1910 in America. Europe implemented the ideas that we've been debating. Right. Just way right back, after World way War II. Back, right after World War II. In America, yeah. we spend like 30 to 40% more per capita mm-hmm. than those people getting taxed and they have way better outcomes. Well, and then when it comes to like, when it comes to, oh man, look, when it comes to like sorry, America, my blood pressure, oh, go, dude, my blood pressure goes up when this stuff starts being I talked. Mean, it's, it's insane. It's if insane. If you take, I'm trying to think of how to go about saying this. I like the idea of the medicine for everybody, you know, that, that. The, I don't know. I guess it's almost like socialized medicine. Yeah. Like social I'm, security. It's I got no, thing. I have no issues with it whatsoever. But don't hammer me for my tax money and just start throwing it away like they're doing yeah. right now. There's so much going. I'm total anti-war. Oh, yeah. I am totally anti-war unless you fuck with me. You fuck with me, you shouldn't have done that. Yeah. Not in my home, you know what I mean? That's just in my country. You mess you mess with and I don't care who you are, what side you're on. You're an American, someone's messing with you that shouldn't be. Yeah. It needs to be stopped. But don't go just fucking they're throwing the money they're blowing. We could have all already Tens had of trillions free insurance. Of dollars. Tens we, of trillions of dollars just. We could have just the since medical 2001 right now. with Afghanistan, Iraq. Yep. $20 trillion burned. A war gone. that should have never had. I was totally Literally. against it. I'm like. Literally. And and look, I got, I got family. God, I shouldn't even. 
I got family so, <laughs> so far up in this messed up government beyond the, I've got family that are, they're, a lot of what you guys are seeing on television going on, the people who work behind the, yeah, the, the, the curtains, the, the curtain. I got family that are, that work f- doing that stuff for a living. Yeah. And that boy getting rich, mm-hmm. that boy got more money right now, know what to do with and doing some crazy shit. Yeah. And they look at you and go, but it's all for our own, our safety. So it's like, it's the, they double edge it. It's like, yeah. they'll tell you right now, dude, fucking Russia's our total enemy. And I'm like, look, they don't like us. They'd fuck with us a little far as I'm concerned. I don't think the guy would ever yeah. f- fuck with us unless you provoked him and sent missiles his way. That Well, that was going to be my next point is <laughs> why, why do we need protection? And then when you look at the reasoning behind it, we've thrown, o- we've, we've overthrown like a hundred governments since like 1960. The military industrial. Yeah. That's Dwight what Eisenhower, Eisenhower said. Yeah. That's what he said. said. And that his was final be- speech. That Literally. was Dwight Eisenhower. And I think, I forget how old was I was born in 1960. So it was like 1954 or something. Yeah. When that happened. And he's like, whatever you do, don't let these people do what they're doing. Yeah. But he also said in the same statement, I don't know how you're going to do it. I don't know I how, don't know how you can, cause you got, because ha- we unlocked this beast after world war two, we kept that, that capacity going. Correct. It should have been, you know, you built, you got it. Look, war has been war since man yeah. was put on this earth and it all started. These people that are warring across, the guys that are warring overseas right now, yeah. they've been warring on each other for thousands of years. This shit ain't going to change. This guy don't like that guy. That guy don't like that guy. Okay, I get it. Stop at the fucking missiles. Yeah. Stop spending money on this stuff. Have enough to protect yourself. But there should be, there's got to be, that's the, here. Now we're back to, well, how do you do it? Yeah. How do you get this guy and go over to this Ayatollah guy and say, hey, dude, think you can quit fucking sending missiles at me? Yeah. Because I'm getting pretty pissed off and I'm tired about it. But now if I'm them, on the other hand, and I'm the Ayatollah, I'm like, you guys been fucking with us forever, you know? And, and it's, it's really, it boils down to my take. It boils down to real estate. And it's, it's, real estate america dude we are sitting on the largest oil reserves in the world yeah fucking no wonder everybody wants a piece of this place yeah but the thing is with america it's also for sale you know well and that's the and they'll sell it to fucking anyone yeah and that's i'm like dude you gotta like like people were talking about uh like tiktok right oh my god i can't believe they're they're infiltrating this they're infiltrating that i agree tiktok the algorithm is breaking people's brains but when it comes to the data, the data is already there and it's already getting bought by the Chinese. They don't need TikTok to fucking get all this data. They can get it anyways. All this data is for sale for pennies on the it's dollar out there from anyway. Facebook, from Instagram. Right. That's they why when they talk about TikTok collecting all your stuff, I'm like, the fuck are you going to go? What the fuck do I care? I'm a 64 year old, dirty old man. I don't give a, no, yeah. I don't want to look at that. I want to look at that. Yeah. You know? And it's like, I don't give a fuck what you know about me. That That's fine. Yeah, well, it, it's all out there. I got anyways. nothing to hide. Yeah, and that's different. How well, if you got something to hide, that's different, and that's where you know you get a lot of people like, well, I don't like people. I don't want people invading my privacy. No, I don't. I don't think anyone's privacy should. Whatever you want to do, you do it. As long as you ain't fucking with nobody and hurting nobody or hurting a kid, I don't care what you do. Yeah. you do anything you fucking want. Just don't start fucking bombing my neighborhood, bro. Yeah, and, you know it's no, like yeah, that's it. And like, God, peace, man. We need some fucking peace in this world. Yeah. And you don't, and the, the other part of it is you have, like we were talking earlier, people, they, they don't care if protesters walk up and scream. They don't care what it looks like. Right. Because at the end of the day, money's still being made and they know they own the politicians that would change things. So they don't care about that. The only thing they're ever going to, uh, the only thing they're ever going to focus on in terms of like changing things, it's like. It's it's really just to make it more, uh, what's the word for it? Like it it'll make it like more subtle. Whatever they do, it'll be like they'll try to make it to where it's not eyes out in the open. Whatever it is, well, that's but, how they operate. Oh yeah, they operate on by the time, nudges. Just by the little, time something hits CNN, it's out of control. It's oh, it's beyond. It's out of yeah, it, it, and be, it's not something that just came out of nowhere. This shit's been thought up. Nothing happens by accident. There ain't nothing oh, happens yeah. by it. It's done like somebody planned this. Like on CNN uh, the other day, right with the uh, with Iran sending drones and all that stuff, right? Mm-hmm. 
CNN started saying how Israel just bombed uh, one of their embassies in another country, which is technically their soil, right? That's what instigated Iran to do that attack. It was because Israel bombed their own embassy in like another country and killed four of their top military leaders. It just happened on eight, like April 1st or 2nd. Mm -hmm. So Iran tells the U.S. what they're going to do. In fact, it's basically like it almost seemed as if they, they intended for every one of those drones and missiles to get stopped. They just needed to launch it for their own population because there's different. There's they're different. What? They're looking for a retaliation. They're wanting a retaliation. Well, no, no, no. They're I mean, not. What? They're not looking for retaliation, but they need to quell their own people because, like, if in America, right, someone bombs us, we're ready to kill everyone. You know what I mean? Like after two thousand one, we had our whatever president would have been in power had a blank check to do whatever he wanted. Correct. It's and the, the same other way. thing is every Amer every one of us came together. Yeah. Because I remember, look, I remember the day all that happened. I was underneath the tractor changing out blades on a tractor when those Twin Towers were hit. And I'm listening to the radio show, um, some talk radio stuff. And when that happened, it's like the next day. Oh, it yeah. didn't care. These two guys hated each other forever. I mean, wanting to kill each other. Look at them now. Yeah. They're right there going, where do we go? We're, come on, man. Let's go kick some ass. Yeah. Everybody came together. So that happened in Iran. And Iran had to do something. The people because, of Iran, I heard, are they're not, but we don't see it on our yeah. television channels because they're not going to yeah. let you see so this like stuff. So, like, they, they said what had happened way too the late. demonstrations. And they had to, yeah, they, they said it way too late in our news. So, Iran had to respond. That's why they told the U.S. exactly what they were about to do. They told the U.S. that, like, a week prior, two weeks prior, what they were going to do. With and you know those phone calls stopped. probably get pretty intense, and they're like, "Oh yeah, of course." Here's everything we're gonna do. Here's exactly why we're gonna do it. Yeah. And you all know that they did this, and we did that, and every you know, yeah. it's everybody knows who's doing what. Because Iran did not want an escalated war; they just needed to like quell their population, who just got pissed that four of their generals got killed. So, Which was if you, if I'm sitting here and some missile comes out of nowhere and kills. Four, well, the generals, I don't, right now, I'm so pissed off at this yeah, army yeah. stuff, this military shit. I've had up here with this shit. Yeah. But, like, it's basically what happened. So, they told the U.S., the U.S. came out right after this was happening and said, we are not going to support Israel in a wider conflict with Iran. We're not going to do it because we're, Israel is like the 51st state. They get all their funding, all their money from us. So, if we say that, Israel can't do anything about Iran, or at least logically they shouldn't. So now I, Israel is not going to respond with Iran in a way that's going to escalate things any any further. And that's I waited but for that. And Iran, I'm like, okay, what you going to do now? Yeah. And then nothing happens. I'm like, well, this is cool. It sucks any of it's happening. Yeah. But, okay, this is cool. Yeah. So obviously there were some phone calls made. Oh, it's yeah. like, look, dude, they were just talking the stand entire down. time. They were stand talking down. the entire time. The U.S. said we're going to stop, uh, get rid of these drones and everything like that. So the U.S. and Israel both destroyed all the drones and everything so by the time they got to israel there's very few of them not like and not a jordan lot yeah. jordan stood by uh stood with us in israel and stopping the missiles all yeah. that stuff which the first thing i thought i'm like damn i don't know if i'd want to be jordanian over there right now i mean that's they're arabs aren't they yeah like and it's like this is this is the arab side of the world yeah. and you're standing with america and the whole rest it seems like the whole rest of that arab world it's well, totally I mean, against this or wanting to make steal well, yeah. from us or make money and it's like i mean it's all money but when it comes to like jordan we have our military bases there they're like another client state same with pakistan and we pay them pa big money yeah. to have those bases there oh yeah like we 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 can we with our bases there we have control over that the region to some right extent. it's like yeah. everybody just so you have but, jordan saudi uh saudi arabia egypt uh what do you call it pakistan iraq we, we have bases all over there, so it's like we we have a foothold in there. Anyways. So it's basically like we're there just to kind of look, just everybody chill. Yeah. Is that basically, I mean, your opinion of the American military institution over there, it's like is there just to keep, well, like, I mean, just chill. Let's not blow more this freaking planet up, okay, guys? Yeah, it's more than that. It's more, it's not so much us keeping the peace. It's more like when we have our government, when we have our uh, bases there, then we bring our corporations there. So our corporations are mining all the oil. So the only thing we care about is the money. So we just want to extract their oil and bring it here. So when it comes to but why we're are bases paying are for the oil. 
It's we're, not like we're, we're taking the oil and just getting this shit for free. But then you have to go back to the lobbying. Who's lobbying for us to be in those countries? It's the military industrial complex. So they, the military industrial complex makes money. Get so how's create, it working? Is it, is it like, okay, the military, the military industrial complex yep. lobbies to keep the boys that own all that land over there? And then we need another reason. So the oil companies lobby to mine there, to, to bring it all out, to get all the minerals, the resources. Mm-hmm. So we're extracting the resources with the bases there. And it's like layer over layer over layer. So then, you know, when we're out there, you also have all these independent contractors, you know, uh, trying to bring people in for translating all these different things. It creates there is so much. It creates an industry all around our military, mm-hmm. and that's that's how America operates in South America, in in the Middle East, mm-hmm. in Asia. Mm-hmm. You know, for instance, all the bases, the like food, instance, yeah, the, everything down in the toilet paper is like somebody's got to build it. Yeah. Somebody's got to pay. And then for when it. you look at all of our like technical proxy states, when you look at what where they are, mm-hmm. what are they all surrounding? They're surrounding Iran. So Iran already is under the gun, regardless, and that's our problem, because we we don't have a treaty with Iran. We got rid of the nuclear deal, so now Iran's technically an adversary. So we have all these client states surrounding them. So if anything were to happen, we can respond back from every direction. Plus, we have our entire military. We have like two uh, battalions. Yeah, I mean they'd be in some in deep shit if they started. I guess if they bomb anything you want just don't bomb here you know it's almost like the yeah. white house says look yeah you do what you want yeah well, send that shit this way you send that shit this way you better be ready for what's coming at you yeah and that was you know i admire that i in and in like in a president that says dude don't do that yeah and i need i want to i want a guy i want a guy running the show that when he says hey dude don't do that they don't do it because they're like, that fucking guy there is probably serious. Yeah. It, I, I Now it's almost, I look and I watch and I'm like, they're second guessing the guy who's running our show for us. You know, do they real, do, do I don't think the president makes a call to begin when this shit ha- starts. Not until it's the, the very, Pentagon and yeah. they're like, hey dude, we need to do this. Yeah. Here's why. And that's that situation room and all that stuff. And yeah. that's. But, you know, like, well, I got another family member that's, it's, the, it's dude, they're mercenaries. Mm-hmm. The money is sick. Yeah. It's sick. You get hundreds of thousands of But you're of running dollars. around, yeah, monthly. Yeah. I mean, these guys are banking some serious jack, man. Mm-hmm. I mean, granted, I, I'm like, if you met him, you'd nicest guy in the world. But a stone cold killer. Yeah. I and mean, these it's what they do for a living. Mm-hmm. I'm like, no, 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 find something else to do, bro. If I don't do it, who's going to do it? Yeah. Some, like the job is there, basically. And they've cut the checks. No mm-hmm. problem. We need seven guys to do this or, you know, they put the. Yeah. Because we have, like, we have our official military there. And then the, the people that retire from our military, they become mercenaries. And then, then they go to work with the CIA. And this yeah. is where the, or that's the, private- the little behind the. Yeah. Curtain stuff. Yeah. Or the private, uh, like, essentially mercenary companies, like, uh, what is it, Blackstone or whatever? Um, One of. Yeah. There's a bunch I of can't, them. But it's, it's, I got to stay away from that. We're yeah. getting a little close to f- yeah, yeah, yeah. family members of mine that there's. Yeah. But, like, all these people go into these companies and then they start yeah. doing private work. Mm-hmm. And that's that's the name of the game, you know, and that's where like, again, tons of our they're tax paid hit man, You know, you're a friggin' hit man. Only you're doing it legally. Yeah. There is no mafia. That's against the law shit. It's like, here, go do this. Don't get caught doing it. Yeah. We don't know. We don't know who you are. Yeah. Um, it's, fuck. It, it's crazy. God, it's, it's, it's crazy. that's the problem. It's yeah. gone fucking crazy. Yeah. And then you get an old guy like me and I'm like, dude, I'm too old for this crazy shit. You know, all I want to do is go to the gym, go fishing, have fun. Everybody have fun. Let's go pick flowers together. Yeah. You know, smoke your dope, dude, so I can laugh at you while you're stoned, you know? And it's. Yeah. You just want to be like, you want to live like a simple. Just leave me the life. fuck alone, bro, yeah. and stop with the killing shit. No, yeah, of course. But they won't. There's, I don't, no matter what you do, they're not going to stop it. No. It's out of control. No, yeah. War is here to stay. I mean, is that, do you look at it like that? It's, it ain't going yeah. away. I mean, the last anti-war president was JFK. I'll put it mm-hmm. that way. Like, what happened? I have those newspapers. I'll bring them over sometime. I have the Miami Herald from the day he was shot 
And then I have the Miami Herald from the funeral where little Johnny's standing mm -hmm. at the casket. And he wasn't this tall. Yeah. I've got those newspapers. My mom was going to go in the attic, clean that shit out for me. I'm like, okay. And I went up in there. I start going, just throwing stuff out. And I said, wait a minute. I start looking. I'm like, holy shit. These are the Kennedy yeah. papers from the Miami Herald. Oh, yeah. You know, and he lived in Palm Beach at the time. Mm -hmm. I mean, my mom and dad used to go and they'd go to church with the Kennedys. Yeah. It was all everything. They danced at the breakers with all these people because that's my mom and dad. They were dad. Had, he that that boy knew how to make some money, and they'd go dance. And that's in Palm Beach. That's what they do back then. Yeah, because it was such a small place. Yeah, everybody would go to the breakers, and if you knew how to ballroom dance, you were you'd fall right in with that crowd. Mm -hmm. And um, yeah, Kennedy, he he knew. <laughs> See, I mean, fuck, look what happened to him. Yeah, two years because he opened his mouth and said. Here's what they're going to do. Yeah. And before he could finish saying, here's what they're going to do. Yeah. You're one, done, dude. One of the last, one of the last, or not one of the last, but um, one of the things that like put the target on him when he was walking out of a uh, briefing right after the Cuban Missile Crisis and things finally started dying down, he was like, I'm going to tear the CIA to shreds. That's what he said. Well, I mean, like when you look at like his assassination... There's so many different lines from all these different little proxies. It's like, oh my god! Like and then this... if you if you ask, well, who's what's what is the CIA? Most yeah, your average person definitely yeah, cannot yeah, tell you. I much. I, 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 mean, I know a little, but I ain't gonna. I'm not like I said. I'm gonna. I ain't going there with that shit because I need to wake up tomorrow morning. I don't yeah. need my cousin banging on my door <laughs> going, "Motherfucker, I'm gonna kill you." <laughs> um, that would have stopped a lot of. It would have slowed it. Yeah, it would have turned I mean, into a different. You, it would have transformed. But I look at the CIA. Here's uh, this is just my opinions. I'm like, it's a bunch of big money globalists. That it, it's like the hitman. They're they're it's a mafia. Yeah, they're a fucking mafia. Yeah, and they do what they want to who they want. And ain't nobody gonna get in their way. Yeah. You get in their way, you disappear. Yeah, you can't. It, it's how do you stop it? Yeah. How the fuck do you stop? That's the thing. It's uh, it, everything is so entrenched at this point. So deeply rooted in our government. Mm -hmm. I mean, yeah. and it's all every one. And there's an I trust no no politician. Yeah. If you're government of any, you knock on my door. I'm like I fucking don't even want to talk to you. Don't trust you. Have a nice day. Yeah. I I just I'm done trusting them because every time they say something, you the next day you look and it turned out to be a lie. Yeah. Fucking stop lying. Give me the truth, dude. Like you said, man, if you're going to fuck me, let me know, bro. Oh, yeah. You know? 100%. 100%. Because <laughs> either I'm going to go, yeah, go ahead, or you're going to have to fucking rape me. Yeah. And it's like, <laughs> they, they don't, now they're to the point to where, fucking, we don't care. We're just going to take it anyway, so we don't need to tell you. Yeah. And that's exactly what it is. Even when you go back to, like, the taxes and everything like that, like you were saying, um, you at least want to know where it's going. So where's my money going? In France, that you don't you vote on where it goes. Basically, you know, you vote on the programs and all these different things that they have locally. Um, I'm not sure to like when it gets into the lower end politics in France. I'm not They're sure. They're full sure blown I'm sure socialist country, correct? No, no. I thought they were. See, this little do I know. Like no. I said, you're dealing with a friggin' redneck here, guys. They're they're with the entirety of Europe. And as you get into certain areas, that's when it becomes like more on the line of like capitalist and socialist. But like France, for instance, it's just a little left wing liberal. So it's like social democrat. It's but they have like, the the medical and all that yeah. stuff. They're on the yeah. But when you get your taxes, you see you pay every a shit. I heard you pay a shitload out. Yeah. But it's like your quality of life is better because that, it goes that doesn't to all cost these other you anything areas. to go get the because you've already paid. It's already paid for. Yeah. So when, with their taxes, when you do your taxes in France, you get a list of everything, An every dollar. basically broke down. Here's where your money went. Yeah. You paid $10,000, 1000 went to this, 500 went to this, 20 went to that, 10 went to that. And you get this whole receipt of where it goes. Wouldn't that be nice? Yeah. Just to be able to know where my shit's yeah. going, And you man. vote on where it goes. I think it's wrong to be honest. The tax, I just, okay, the flat tax. I don't know much about it, but when I hear... Somebody that's <clears throat> smart, an economist that knows their shit, yeah. and says, hey, dude, if everybody paid 5%, everybody, flat out 5% or whatever, it's a small number, we'd be done. We'd have enough money for everything. And I'm like, what? Yeah. Well, then why don't they do it? Why don't they do it? And they're like, why don't they do it? Yeah. I mean, like, yeah. The why flat, don't they do flat it? Flat tax, it, I mean... 
and I'm not an economist before I go any further, but like from what I understand about flat tax, it, it would be efficient at collecting all the money like that we would need technically. And you can essentially vote. Like, do we increase it a percent and start adding this to our safety nets or whatever it would be, whatever mm -hmm. we want to do. Mm -hmm. Um, it doesn't address the consolidation of wealth at the top. So like in America, we are, are you familiar with like Gilded Era? Like in America where it's like, mm -mm. so the Gilded Era is essentially a ton of money basically got concentrated into the top like 0.1%, right? Like your essential, like your, your oligarchs at the time in America, okay. your Rockefellers and all there, mm -hmm. all that concentration of money started moving up and that, those those events led to like the great depression so like when wealth gets too concentrated all that money stays there unless something brings it back down and if it stays there the guy down there is... it's a house of cards because then all of a sudden the economy collapses the people mm -hmm. on top are fine the people at the bottom are crushed where do you think we are now we're beyond the gilded age in terms of wealth inequality we're actually worse now than it was then we just don't notice it because we extract all these resources from the third world where we can have cheap TVs. We could have all this cheap shit because mm -hmm. right? it's not made here. Well, that's like when you find something that made in America and you're like, yeah, I'll buy that. And you look at the price and you go, whoa, $2,000, $3,000, you know, but the reasoning why, like, you know, and there's like this, this gets into like theory basically, but it's basically like, because things are cheap, they've <clears> been <throat> able to mitigate social pressure from the bottom because it still seems survivable even though technically in terms of the amount of wealth America has and how much of it it's on top, mm -hmm. it's so concentrated that it's beyond the Gilded Era at this point. So right now we're just, it's, there's just so many, it's, you're, you're literally saying there's so much money at the top yeah. that it's like, it's beyond, it's beyond it's, that. I mean, it's like, cause I will, you know, I watch a little bit of TV. I don't watch the news much cause I don't trust this shit. I'm like, yeah. I don't know if I can CNN or Fox or none of them. I'm like, I, I just, who do you believe? But it's like, Shit's gonna happen. You oh, can't yeah. keep printing money. Well, yeah. At the rate they're printing money at, and go, everything's gonna be fine. Yeah. And then a little woman come on TV and say, everything's gonna be fine. You know, we got this, we got this little transitionary stuff, and I'm like, bro, you're printing fucking money. That's yeah. There, it, it, it's which is where what the inflation comes in, correct? Because of half oh, look, some you, of it. You, you got Not, this much. You got this much product to sell. You need this much money to buy it with, yeah, and or build it and then buy it with. But you got all this extra money. Well, so so now we're gonna have to charge you more for it because with the uh, with the inflation though. So I what there was a congressional hearing that happened. I watched it where they broke down inflation. Right, it was boring, but you get to see where it comes from. Fifty, it was like fifty four percent of all the inflation mm -hmm. is is corporate price gouging. Just profiteering, which is we're Americans and they they just yep. stick it to us. So like for instance, go to India and, and go buy cancer medicine. I yeah. heard it's dirt cheap. Yeah. So if you remember on the news back like two years ago, they were like, "Oh, these wage these wage increases are going to affect inflation." The wage increases actually, relatively speaking, stayed steady. Like it went up to eight percent of inflation was wage. Mm -hmm. Over fifty four percent was straight corporate profiteering and then it was like another 15 percent was supply chain issues that got fixed so when it comes to like inflation the inflation's artificial and the reason we can't address it through increasing interest rates or whatever else is simply because the inflation is from corporations seeing that nothing's going to happen to them if they increase their prices 10 percent five percent two percent over the course of a year so and if somebody did bitch or complain, yeah, here lobby, yeah, lobby. So like for instance, lobby. Here's buy, another envelope. You buy a jug of milk, right? And let's just say for easy numbers, it costs three bucks. Mm -hmm. It used to cost two. Mm -hmm. Let's say where's ten that, cents. Where's that money going? Let's say I'm ten. Like, it costs them an extra ten cents to produce. So but now, they're charging me fifty cent more. They're charging you. So 90, where's that forty? Or they're 90, charging you okay. ninety cents more. Correct. Okay. Regardless, it's and, like where's that money going? Yeah. So. Well, when you look at you again, if you listen to their public here, uh, public earning statements and everything, mm -hmm. they're flat out saying in these public statements, we could just keep charging people more and more. It seems like nobody stops us. Yeah. Nobody's nobody's. Yeah. Because then bitch it, about it all. Because then want, that's but... the circle of that's the circle of the system where it's like, well, 
Well, who's going to stop us? The politicians. We already lobby them. Correct. What's going to stop that? Well, unless you have a million people that march on Washington again. I what's think the lobbying stop shit should be outlawed, banned. Oh, yeah. 100%. It should be due to it just because then it's straight up. Yeah. It's transparent. There ain't no door closing. Well, then the incentive the, becomes I'm going to help the people now. Right now, the incentive flipped. Now they're going to help the, the corporations, right, Wall Street and all them. Correct. Regardless, and this has been going on for how many years now, and it doesn't matter who's in office. Yeah, this stuff's been started what 30, 40 years ago and ain't stopped. No, it's, it's getting like, worse, and it's been Democrats in, in the White House, yep, Republicans in the White Democrats, and Republicans, they all, and they all continue the same policy, and it just stays on and on. I'm like, who's gonna, I mean, who fixes it? Yeah, what do you do? And then it's like, okay, come in and fix it, they'll Kennedy your ass, yeah. They'll put a cap in your ass, probably. You go out there and start shaking that tree. You have to be willing to you. You have to be, uh, you have to be like charismatic enough to 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 win the election because you're gonna have to do it through small donations. You're gonna have to get in there. Oh, it's and the then guy sending with, that five dollars every month. Yeah, and you get millions and millions and millions of them doing it, yeah. and you're like. That's some chunk of change coming And then when in. you get in office, you have to go in with, with the expectation that I might have two years here before, like, something bad happens. I might get killed. I might this. I might that. Because historically... See, I've never looked at it like that. And I'm glad you're saying that because now you're opening my eyes a little bit. As an old guy, I'm like, never yeah. really thought of it like that. You know, maybe two years in, shit yeah. could hit the fan here and Kennedy, I'm going to be in Kennedy a world of shit. Kennedy made it halfway through his first term when he died. But in those two years, because of who he was and what he was trying to do, he had the impact to where we still talk about him today. Charisma. Yeah, exactly. And he was ballsy. That guy was ballsy, man. I mean, he'd yeah. tell it. He's, here's how I see it. And, here's and, how it's... and in his memoirs, he wasn't some fearless dude. He was scared the entire time. He, he just knew it was the right thing. He knew thing. it was. He was doing the right thing. It was almost like the Martin Luther King. Yeah. Dude, I'm doing the right thing, but I know what they're going to do to me. Yeah. Martin you Luther know? King, again, like, you know, you want to talk about just coincidence. He did the civil rights march mm -hmm. a month after, or a month after the time he died. He planned on doing an economic rights march. He spoke in Tennessee about Wonder economic if they rights. They knew this. Well, they did. He was getting death threats by the there FBI. There were probably people on the inside. Right. You know, there's they'll pay people by the FBI. He was getting death threats. Don't do this. Don't knowledge. do that. All public knowledge. We're going to release all your personal information. We're going to show who you've been cheating with, all this stuff. And then they finally started sending him like major death threats. Like, we're going to hurt your family. We're going to do this. We're going to do that. Stuff I never knew. All public knowledge. A month before he did the second march on Washington for economic rights, he was killed. Malcolm X even, right? Malcolm X, his entire security team was arrested the day he was killed. And he went into that speech knowing he was going to die. Now, King... When I look at Martin Luther King, I often I look into myself and I go, that man had more than just a vision of helping the black people. Yeah, he was, I he think was, he was out to help everyone. He he was like he was like me. It's yeah. like, dude, in, everybody in, equal. In his speeches, he would constantly say, um, you know, this isn't just like he, especially at the end, he was like, this isn't just about, you know, this isn't the a African color Americans. issue. This this is this is about this is about the well being of all Americans. America, Americans, yeah. America. He, he kept saying, they wouldn't, this is about they the well-being of all of us. If, it's if, not about just civil rights. It's about all rights, human rights, things that should be considered. And it's like like a lot of the music. You know, I'm older, so I listen to a lot of when I'm in the gym working out, and I'm listening to the, the old stuff in Living Colors, you know, yeah. and the, the band, those those bands. where And these guys sing a lot. They sing about Martin Luther, you know, and how it's like when a leader speaks, a leader dies. Yeah. And I'm like... Wow, you know, it's like, oh yeah, yeah, pretty much, and that's how it works. You know, when he goes over that boundary line, yeah, once you cross that boundary line, there ain't no coming back. No, yeah, because so if you join up with them, you're okay, you're fine with us. You let us just keep blowing shit up and spending yep. money. Give us all the money we want. Let us blow shit up. Keep the little guy down, and we're good with it. Yeah, but if you come in and go, hey, wait a minute, no, 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 if you want, we're gonna stop the wars. Trump didn't have any wars. There wasn't, I mean, there was probably shit going on. I mean, I'm not going to sit here and like suck the guy's dick no, 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 yeah. because it's like, nobody's perfect. Yeah. But it's like, shit seemed a little calmer. Everyone was kind of getting along a little better. And now it's just fucking turmoil. And I'm like, yeah. 
how did this happen so quick? Yeah. And then like, even if you look at, if you look at Trump's presidency, he didn't start any new wars. He continued all of Obama's. That was one. He, he, he put in place a plan to get out of Afghanistan that Biden followed. Um, but if you look at his administration, they pretty much just continued the Obama administration with like the right wing tilt with the tint of the right wing itself. But it seemed to be working. Continued all the uh, Obama stuff. Well, yeah, because it's not about again. It it doesn't really matter. Like the right left thing is it's kind of stupid because if you're if you're fighting on like class lines, if you look at politics on class lines, mm-hmm. it's a whole nother war. And it, that's how they look at it, isn't it? Is, yeah, that's they look at everything on class lines. The, the the middle class and the working class have effectively been waged class war against for 67 years mm -hmm. the working class in this country has no idea because we're stuck in the frame of left right this that the real war isn't left and right in the groove we're stuck in get up in the morning go to work yeah get your ass to work because we're pacified come home eat dinner go to sleep and and i watch it and i'm like that's the machine that's your there's your pink floyd welcome to the machine yeah and And that's the machine yeah, and then you even go back to the founding, right? The founders, I forget which one it was, like Adam Smith or something, he was saying that wage slave is akin to slavery regardless. Wage slavery is akin to wages. Like like today, we're all paid by the hour. A lot of us, we're paid salary. We're this, we're that. It's all wage. That's a way wage of slavery. Keep, yeah, it's a way of keeping people constrained. Keep and then it cap. pacifies us too because how can we rock our own boat? Because if I rock my own boat, there's no social safety net to put me in like a house if, if I lose everything mm-hmm. because I take a risk and say what I think. Mm-hmm. So you end up on the street. When you end up on the street, the average homeless person lives what? Three years on the street before they die? You know, it's... It, well, there's another one. Maybe if, Nick, if I get to come back out, guys, maybe someday I'll share that one with you because I've been there. Been there, done that. Yeah. I have wined and dined in some of the finest dumpsters in Palm Beach County. And I laugh at it when I say that, but it's true. I've been there. Yeah. I know what it's like to be homeless. And it sucks. Mm-hmm. And it sucks. And I was out there for a solid four years. Drug habit. Mm-hmm. Drug addict. You know, that was it was all because of one yeah. one little tap of one little certain drug. And I just fell in love overnight. And that just took me, you know, off in another direction. It just everything just ruined me. Ru- I ruined myself. Mm-hmm. I literally just ruined myself. But picked up moved on turned around changed everything but that your average guy now it's just that you know the slave wage yeah 50 cents an hour that's where i was fixing to go to that and like these guys you say you keep grinding out son i i've because i have built half this county yeah. working on these condos and building swimming pools with my dad and stuff like that and it's these the, the, you know the boss man look keep it up son i'll give you 50 cent raise next month i'd look at them guys and say 50 cents yeah. do the math it's it's a few dollars. A 12 pack of beer dude yeah. keep your fit you, i spit on your 50 cent yeah and i've lost a lot i've walked off a lot of jobs over that so i don't need your 50 cent i'll go over here i'll guarantee that guy over there give me a dollar an hour yeah and they'd say well what do you want to start at and i'd say what do you make to the bosses what do you make what do you mean what do you make i want to make a hundred dollars less than you they go you're crazy and i'd say then give me a hundred dollars more a week than what you're wanting to pay me and I'll come to work for you. And I'm loyal. Always been a loyal worker. Bust my ass. Yeah. Did a lot of stuff. Worked in government for 20 years. I've done a lot. I've been, well, you guys kind of got, you and your bro got to know me a little bit and some of the stuff that I've done. A lot of crazy shit. A lot of hard work. Paid a shitload in taxes. And now I'm just, I'm at the age now to where it's like, quit stealing from the younger generation, please. You guys are robbing these guys. Literally robbing you guys. They're, they're fucking robbing you. Mm-hmm. And it doesn't matter which red, blue, I don't give two shits about. The, it ain't purple. It's purple. Yeah. Because it's one. It's one revolving it's party. It's one big machine. And they all know it. Yeah. And they keep us, like you're saying, they just keep that little guy down. Let him stay happy. But now it's gone beyond. It's beyond that. They don't even, it's like, they don't give a shit. Yeah. Like, we don't care if you try to burn the place down. And I'm like, you keep the shit up and people might just go there with that. Oh, yeah. I mean, like when you, there was a study that came out recently, your generation, the generation surrounding yours, the average thing you guys would uh, splurge on in a year when you looked at like your breakdown of your income, mm-hmm. it'd be on like travel, luxury goods, things like that. Mm-hmm. The same study came out this year. And you want to know what 
the millennial generation and Gen Z's splurging was? Groceries. You got things you have to have. Yeah, necessities. So, I mean, look, we were all making, we were making decent money. We were working our asses off and we were buying boats and we were fishing yeah. all the time. But that's what we did. This yeah. is, look, we're in South Florida. But like our generation would be the same if, if we made the equivalent. You couldn't do it. These would. kids today don't have a shot. No. And that's what pisses me off. Yeah. And then I hear there's a lot of guys my age I'll have this argument with and go, and look, I, I'm right-leaning. You know, you're probably left-leaning. I'm right-leaning. But I'll look them right in the eye and say, they're screwing these kids. Yeah. You can't fucking do that to this kid. He's busting his ass. Granted, I look at some of these colleges and I look at some of these classes and I'm like, you, the fuck? You don't yeah. need that. You're not going to. There's nobody out there who wants you to do this and this and yeah, but we don't incentivize trade school either. <clears throat> and that's the key right there. Yeah. Trade the fucking plumbers out here today are making a killing. Yeah, they make a hundred Granted, it's a year, nasty job. You're dealing with I've done it. I did it for years. Yeah. But even made, electric and everything, hundred grand the, a year. There's killer money to be made doing it. And and it's 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 good for the soul. You it's a good, honest living. Yeah. And you can have and pride in what you're doing. You do that shit three, four years, get to know it right, you go take that test, next thing you know. There I am starting my company. Yeah. You know, what? My, I'm a fishing guide, you know, and I have my corp, my my company. I have my own company. I'm incorporated. Yeah. N but it wasn't by choice because I left government. That was, fucking, there's another story you guys will never get to hear that. So maybe, <laughs> maybe why I left the government. <laughs> and if I told you that story, you there's, I'd have to probably make a few phone calls first. One would probably be the inspector general of the state of Florida. And have a, have a talk and say, can I talk about this? Or are you guys going to come after me? Or, <laughs> fuck. Crazy you get shit. Get a breakdown of what you end up. Crazy. But I had no, so that's why I started guiding. Yeah. Went and got my captain's license. Okay. So that's what led you into actually like doing the fish guides. Right. I mean, I was born and raised fishing. It was what we did. We were something, my dad, awesome fisherman. Yeah. So we always, we fished and it's, it's, I took my hobby. Told the government to shove it up their ass. They flipped out when I told them, I'm here's two week notice. I resigned because they were fixing to try and fire me. They were setting me up. And I saw it coming and I knew it. And I went, Watch this. I'm going to drag this out to the last minute. And then went, oh, Here you go. Two week notice. What do you mean? What are you going to do? <laughs> and, then the, and then my supervisor looked at me the day I quit. He looked at me and said, What are you going to do? So I'm going fishing. Fishing? What do you mean, fishing? I said, I'm a Coast Guard licensed captain. I'm going to go be a fishing guy. Yeah. And he went, you never told me that. And I said, you never asked. Yeah. And that was, just, it was just a good card to have. Yeah. So you got and the for you, those of you out there that are into fishing or boating, go do it. Do it. The sea school. It's like 800 bucks. And it's like this grinding week course. And at the end of the week, then you go take the test. And it's just another thing you got in your wallet. And you're like, check this shit out. Yeah. And people are like, damn. And that's the stuff, the incentives, yeah. you know, like your military people. And today, no one, who the fuck wants to go into this military, which is a great thing to have in your friggin' repertoire and go, I'm a Marine, you're hired. Yeah. Because they know that you have the discipline. They know that you're, you're loyal and it's a discipline and loyalty go a long ways. And if you discipline yourself properly and, and stay loyal to whoever it is you're working for, you can't go wrong, you know, just don't do some of the crazy shit that I did and end up out there living <laughs> in the fucking streets, you know, Yeah. crazy fun. I've had a lot of fun at my age. I, I, you, if I look back yesterday, I went to a memorial for a buddy of mine that passed away a couple of weeks ago. And it's one of the best fishermen you'd ever meet in your life. This guy was just a wizard. And, uh, we were, there was a lot of us talking about how much crazy stuff we've done but turned it around, you know? Yeah. And this guy just happened to be one of them guys that never went there. He was always just loyal to his work, you know, persistent up every morning at five o'clock. And just the slave, slave yeah. labor, you know, all of us just were, we're slaves. Yeah. This machine, what if we all just stopped? I mean, that's, that's. Imagine if everyone just took their car keys and went, I'm not going today. That. Everybody. And they went, well, wait a minute. Whoa, whoa, whoa. The machine stopped. Yeah. We, we, that's some. Billions of dollars a day would disappear. Billions. Billions. Oh, yeah. Tens. Twenty. Like, and if, if we did it properly, 
and just said, this is it. You guys are going to stop this show that you got going. Yeah. And shit's going to change a little. Nothing. Look, just take care of us. The same as we've been taking care of. You guys all got rich. Yeah. We just want our shot at living decent with our families. You know, the the 30 something year old guy needs to get a shot at buying a house and be able to afford it. I've always wondered, man, if we all took our keys just for one day and went. So I, I don't think it's this year. I think it's next year. But they're actually trying to plan a general strike, which is what you're talking about. Period. Yeah. Everybody. General strike. Everyone just stop. Everybody. It doesn't matter the industry, the job you have, a general strike. Just stay home for one day. Yeah. Well, I mean, their goal is to like see if they could even get the traction. Well, how far can we push them? Yeah. But I mean, if you get 10, 20% of the population to stop key fact key uh, industries that they work in like trash all these different things if you get 20 percent of the population if to everybody just stop, oh my god and then day two you get 30 percent because the other 10 percent were like oh i didn't realize this was going on then you, you build it up for like even have it if you have it last two weeks they'll pass whatever law you want they'll pass pro union laws pro this pro that whatever it would be to make the average citizens happy it's deep shit here buddy. but it's happening they're trying to do it i think 2025 and the Sean I know nothing about this. Yeah, See, Sean... I would look, guys, those old guys would never know nothing about it until the day that it happened. Then they'd come on yeah. the news and go, well, here's what's happening. I think what? they're trying to get, like, Sean Fain or, like, some of those union leaders that got those contracts for UPS and the Teamsters. Mm -hmm. They're trying to get some of them to, like, try to lead Which, the look, show. Look, unions, and I got nothing against I worked unions. Yeah. When I was a kid, I worked IBEW. I think I was 17, well, I was 17, 18, and 19, those three years. I worked as what's called a grunt. I was a grunt. Mm -hmm. I mean, I worked on the high lines out here going through all these marshes and swamps, setting those 100-foot giant poles and building the super high-voltage yeah. transmission lines. That's what I did, and I was a grunt. I was down there on the ground with the rattlesnakes and moccasins because <laughs> this was all swamp. We were, they were running. They said, this shit's got to go to Tampa. Yeah. My brother's like, dude, you want a job? Because he was, he was a union lineman. Yeah. And he's like, here's your job right here, bro. And I'm like, yeah, and it was a good job. They treated you right. You busted your ass. You got paid good. Yeah. And that's the one thing I respect about the unions. They stand up and go, no, you're going to pay them this because they're worth it. Yeah. You know, which is a lot of the problem out here today yeah, is these none. guys. <laughs> there's none. And then, and then to top it off, now you've got 10, 12 million people that just came into our country that'll say, I'll do that for, I'll do that for $12 an hour instead of 15 Yeah wait a minute you're hired yeah and then danny, they hire, danny go home yeah and then what they get 10 people well i mean like and there's even more to that but like they'll these people they'll come in for looking for better opportunity than their countries and they'll you know they'll have like eight ten people in a house just living there paying the rent and more yeah the end of my street bro oh, there's yeah. probably 15 of them living in that house yeah every one of them but here's the deal every morning about five o'clock I hear them engines start cranking up on them trucks, and they're by by five thirty, every vehicle's gone. Yeah. They're working. The yeah. fuckers get up and go to work yeah. in a heart, drunk or not. They're going to work. Oh yeah. What's your average white guy's like? Fuck this. I'm hungover. I'll just stay home today. They work, but I look at it. I go, okay. You're out there busting your ass. You're going to work. Okay. We'll give him a check too. They're making cash money. Yeah. They're getting subsidies that's basically what i call it when you start giving me free money that subsidies the government's cutting them checks how can you fucking say no to that well when it comes to the the subsidies that's been baked into uh that's been baked it like a lot of propaganda has baked that point across to try to like create uh some animosity like there's not not so many subsidies going to them but they won't they won't pay Fuck attention. Fuck it. Give me a... I want my yeah. fucking... I want my... Ch I want a card. Yeah. I want a card so I can get fucking so free food. The real... the Yeah, like food stamp card, right? Like... Live um, here forever and bust yeah. my ass. You're Agreed. gonna give him free shit? Give me... See, right back to where I'm at. Just look, treat everybody... Everybody everybody on the same plate here. Fairness. Everybody yeah. fair. Don't go giving this guy more than you're giving me. Yeah. Well, I mean, like, you know? with, uh, with America, again, like those laws have been lobbied for to keep them from being able to get paperwork because they can, especially in the agricultural industry, it's lobbied to where they can like, instead of paying them, they can just have them deported and then they get another round of people in and they extort them like that. And which is you got for the, when it comes to 
look, when it comes to agriculture, they're the kings. Yeah. They're the kings. Yeah, it goes back to you the know, first Very, very close friend of mine owns a giant farming system down here in South Florida. I won't say their name. Yeah. They are huge. And he's like, dude, them boys there, they make my money for me. And they make sure that every one of them trucks end up at a grocery store somewhere. And when you're buying that head of lettuce, that bell pepper, that tomato, that's my stuff. Yeah. And those guys, they're there every morning. And they bust their ass. And a lot of them, for years, they were treated like shit, which I will. And I will come. Like I said, I'm a per, I am try to be fair. Yeah. Even though I'm right lean, I try to be fair. Because these people bust their ass. That's gnarly fucking work, man. Yeah. Go out there. I did it with a buddy of mine when I was probably in my early teens. The, the, the old Speedway out here. Jimmy Crow was this guy. And he was a, a stock car race, racer. Yeah. And he was into that business. And he'd go out there with the trucks. And, the, and he'd say, you know, I want to. I want two, 300 watermelons. And they'd say, okay, go pick them over there. And then he'd pay us to go pick this stuff. And let me tell you what, dude. It's tough. I don't wish that work on anybody. Yeah. That's hard work. You want to break your back? Go do that shit. Go fucking chuck watermelons for a week. Yeah. At the end of the week, and then look at your paycheck and go, damn, dude, I busted my ass for that little bit of money. Mm -hmm. Treat me better. Yeah. You know, treat everybody better. It's something's got to fucking give, man. Yeah. Well, I mean, even with like the immigration thing, like the reason why America has always had a, a, a historically young workforce is because of the legal immigration. And when that changed, now we're in a position where we have the baby boomer generation and then the generation under it isn't replacing them in the workforce. Correct. Anymore. That, there is, that's... But that's that's an immigration problem because America has always flourished by allowing all the people in to begin with. That's like, but what all if it the, was about. these, this, like, there's that generation in between that didn't, they're just, these, they're not producing. They don't want to, I'm going to go be a lawyer. I'm going to go be a lawyer. I'm going to be a doctor. I'm going to be this. I'm going to be this college, 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 yeah. gonna, back to the trades. And I'm like, yeah. and you wonder why these guys are all, yeah. they're, they're, they're roofers. All these guys living in that house, the industry, they're roofers. Mm -hmm. And I've seen them in the neighborhood busting all day long, busting on that hot fucking roof. Yeah. But it's good money. Yeah. And it's like, learn the trade. Yeah. You know, well, I don't want to work hard. I just want to be, I want to work smarter, not harder, which is fucking genius. Mm -hmm. Cause I can look right at you right now and tell you working harder fucking destroyed my body. Yeah. Made my living. The, the fishing guy thing. Everybody thinks it's such an easy, oh man, you might, that's an awesome job. I'd love to do that. I'll go, here's my boat key. Yeah. Good luck. <laughs> I'll guarantee you at the end of the day, when they bring that boat back and go, you can have this key back. Yeah. That's hard fucking work. You're throwing cast nets and it's dark out. You're looking for bait that you can't see. You just hope they're in these different areas. Yeah. You but by eight o'clock, by the time I put a client on my boat at eight o'clock in the morning, I've done busted my ass three hours labor. Yeah. Four hours later labor. If you think about the time hooking the boat up, getting all the shit in the boat. Yeah. You woke up at like fuel. four a.m. to do I it. I get up at three thirty to four a.m. Yeah. to do this shit. And I'm 64 years old. I'm still doing it. By the time 10 a.m. comes around, you've had a full day. And you get, by the time 10 a.m., you're just now getting started, man. It's, you're now, you're just getting into it. Yeah. With these people that are flying in from all around the world to pay you big money to take them out and have fun. Hey, people, you guarantee fish? Fuck no, I don't care. What I, I'm, not, I'm a guy, not God. <laughs> what are you going to do? <laughs> but, I, but when you know your shit, you're like, I know where they're at. Come on, we'll go. we're going to go catch shit. We're going to have fun doing this. It's all about fun. But at the end of the day, when I'm done scrubbing the boat and it's eight o'clock at night, three thirty in the morning, get up, fucking eight o'clock at night, sit down, go to sleep. That's why I don't try not to work much anymore. I'm yeah. like fucking, I'm over the shit. I get the you know, government like pensions and yeah. But I still go out and do it just because it is good money and it's fun as shit to take people out and do it. Yeah. It's one of those jobs that, that is fun to do with people because there's so many of the first timers. I've never caught one of these. That's a bucket list. Yeah. I've never caught a tarpon. Good. You caught your first tarpon today. I've never caught a snook to put you on your first snook. How many thousands of people I can, God, my first snook, first snook. First. And then everything else. It's just, it's a cool job, but I don't, it's a kid's job. Yeah. You got to be, that's a lot of the reason how we met, you know, working yeah. out the gym and stuff to try and stay in shape to do this shit because it just, it's taxing. Yeah. It's fucking awesome money. And now, and now here's another one for you. 
the markets flooded in Florida with fishing guides. Because every fucking rich kid, mom said, what do you want to be, Tommy? I'm going to be a fishing guide. Here, here's a new boat. Here's yeah. a truck. Here's all the shit. I'm like, whoa, whoa, wait a minute, man. I had to fucking mow yards to make that money. And, you're just, <laughs> and now they're everywhere. Yeah. You know, but you just deal with them. And most of them, they know who I am because I've been around a long time, done a lot of stuff, been on all the TV shows and the magazines and all that bull. I'll bring some magazines over next time. Let you yeah, know. for sure. Matter of fact, one of the magazines called me last month and said, look, dude, let's hook up maybe next month and go do something. We don't care what it is. Let's just, he wants to do an article. Yeah. I'm like, sure. No problem. And he's a really cool dude. One of the best photographers you'll ever meet. Um, just, this guy's fucking crazy. Yeah. He's one of these guys you're out 20 miles out in the ocean fishing and there's sharks and shit around, and you're on a fish. He's over. He's in the water with a camera, looking, <laughs> taking pictures. I'm like, dude, you're out of your fucking oh, mind. Yeah. Get back in the boat. He's no, no. It's what I do for a living. You're out of your fucking mind. Makes good money. I've gone shark diving once, actually. That is in the cage or shark no, diving. I was in. I was in the water. Okay. I was in the water. I've gone skydiving once. I've gone. Never shark done diving. it. Heard that's pretty cool. Skydiving's awesome. The shark diving was the scariest thing. Because it's a different feeling when you have like a bull shark float right up to you mm -hmm. and you have to redirect them or whatever else. Mm -hmm. But it's a different feel when they're staring you in the eye. Mm -hmm. And the entire purpose of the company that runs them is to like get rid of the stigma from sharks. Mm -hmm. But I'll tell you this what. This was Bahamas. No, this was uh, off of Jupiter. It's called Shark Addicts. Okay. And um, they, they bring you out like a couple miles Mm -hmm. and you could barely see the shore and you're on the edge it's called yeah. in jupiter they call that the edge yeah and it's fucking shark infested it's, and they bait them up yeah and oh, yeah. then they then you go in mm -hmm. and you're just told like keep you're going. out of your fucking mind that's yeah. all i got to say about i did it once the scariest experience i've ever had mm -hmm. because it's like when you're skydiving at least you have to surrender to the moment and be like if something goes wrong i'm gonna hit this ground ten thousand feet right up. i'm burning I'm, out I'm, there ain't no coming I'm back done yeah i'm done toast with the sharks, you're staring. You're looking you're around. Staring you're staring your potential death in the, in the face. <laughs> is he coming up behind me? Yeah. It's, see, my dad. We did. God, so much stuff going all, uh, all through the Bahamas as a kid, treasure hunting, because he owned a swimming pool company. Yeah. And he'd have his crews working, but he always bought big boats, and we were always our summer. We were in the Bahamas, treasure hunting. The man had a passion for hunting treasure, because he said all it takes is to find that one big hit. Like friggin' Mel Fisher did down in the Keys yeah. for that, you know, $400 million fine. And dad, that's what we did. So you're in the water every day. And here I am, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, all the way up till I was like 16, seven, eight years old, down there in the water in the middle of nowhere in the fucking Bahamas. Yeah. On the Matinella Shoal where it drops off from 20 feet to 5,000. And there's fucking, there's 15 foot tiger shark. Oh, yeah. I mean, you're constantly, you're just, but you got to get to where you're just, it's, it's like a, there's that fine little line. You're like fucking dude, if you worry about it, they're going to know it. Oh yeah. Cause they're going to feel, they feel it. it. They feel like, it. They come up and start fucking doing the circle and shit. Oh, you just keep an eye on them. And if they get close, you just, you, we always had little bang sticks that we carried where if it, if it got too close and you had to put a bullet in its nose, you could. Yeah. But it was like, that's like a no-no. Yeah. You just take things, slap the side of their head. Usually they'll just turn away. Yeah. Well, so with the, uh, with the thing I did, they would tell you if they come too Tap close. Tap them in the nose. Literally put your hand on top of their nose and just guide them Push away. Push them away. Because they can't stop and turn around. Like they have no, to No, they go can't through. just stop and do reverse. Yeah, they don't have to, they're not walking on something. They're just swimming through. <laughs> so it's like that you have to redirect them. So airy feeling, isn't it? Oh my God. Imagine being stuck in a cave. With a fucking eight foot bull shark. No, it, been there, horrifying. done that, scare you to death. Wouldn't let me out of this cave. There was an opening, you know, big enough for like me and you both could have swam through it into this cave. And the cave, when I went into it, and we were doing treasure hunt shit, we're looking around for shit, and I'm anywhere out. Shit like that always drew my eye. I'm like fucking cave, cool. Let's go into this. What's in here? You know. Yeah, yeah. The top of it, Mother Nature somehow had busted out. So it wasn't holding air. So it's full of water, which means any critter could get in its critters, we call them, swimming. Yeah. I went in the place and looking around, there's nothing, nothing, nothing. Then I look up and there's this giant bull shark swimming upside down and then came down and started circling around me. I'm like, holy shit. And he fucking wouldn't let me back to that opening. And I'm looking, oh, fuck, I'm going to run out of air in a little bit. And I'm fucking, I'm a kid. I'm 
14 years old, I think, that when that happened. And that was scary shit. Yeah. And finally, so what I did, I just started easing along the wall of this cave and got as close to the entrance as I could. And then when that fish went that way, one I just fucking slid out that hole, yeah. hopped up fucking screaming. Yeah. Hey! And <laughs> come with a little climbing up. What happened? Fucking, you don't even want to know, dude. Yeah. Fucking. It's horrible. Scary, but it's... But what an adrenaline rush. I look back now and I go, I had to do all that shit. Yeah. Not many people can say that. Not many people. I've, I've been diving, scuba diving, f- hookah rigging, finding emeralds all over the bottom and it's shimmering green and you're like, what the hell are these? And you pop up because they tr- drag you behind this little skiff. A 16 foot whaler or 13 foot whaler, whatever you had. It's shit they're eating at all anyway <laughs> um yeah the payoff if you see something different out of place just let go of the rope and because they're in the, he's running and they're watching you they're they're doing like a turn the whole time and he's watching you he sees that rope pop up and he knows okay you just let go of the rope over whatever it is you see and um it was one of my dad's buddies who was with us and he came back and goes what'd you see I said, the bottom's all shiny green. He looked at me and goes, really? And I said, yeah. And his eyes just went like this. Emeralds. And there was just fucking hundreds of them. They weren't big ones. Probably in today's market, they were probably, it's a $500 emerald. Yeah. But the bottom was just littered with them, hundreds of them. And that's when they brought the big boat around, dropped anchor, and then went up, put on the hookah rigs with the hoses. So that you, and then a weight belt, and you go. You're just standing on the bottom, breathing, yeah. filling baby jars, Gerber baby jars, full of fucking little emeralds. <sighs> but the thing about then, and here you are doing this shit, and you're getting so into what you're doing, you forget to Start look around, around you now and then. And every now and then, you just see a big fucking gray flash out there. You're like, what the fuck is that? The big sharks or yeah. kudas? Kudas suck because yeah. they come up there. That's a scary critter. Yeah, they're because nice. they will slide up on you and just sit there and. And then all of a sudden you look away and look over and they're gone. And next thing you know, he's, he's on your, he's, he's shiny shit. It's all about shiny. Don't wear shiny. Yeah. And you know, oh man, this stuff we did so much fun. <laughs> God, so much fun waking up in the morning and going out. I used to walk out the, the jetty at the inlet in West end and go fish with the local Bahamians in the morning for yellowtail snappers. Yeah. And little yo-yos. No fishing rods. Yo-yos. We fished what the Cuban yo-yos, they call them. And um, got them walking out the jetty one morning, and there's all these things in my way. I was probably maybe seven years old. It was like someone built this wall, and you couldn't walk out on the jetty, and it was bales. Yeah. Bales of weed, just hundreds (laughs) of bales. So in the night, a big boat came in and unloaded, and whoever was supposed to be there to get it, didn't show up to get it. Oh, shit. And it's just, there's the jetty just covered in bales. And this is like, you know, it's dark out. And I'm walking out the jetty thinking, yeah, we're going to go. And we take a little bucket with our conch and crack conch and little pieces of conch. And then snapper will eat that stuff all day long. And it was all marijuana. That was so funny. <laughs> I didn't know what it was. Just went back to the boat. And my dad's sitting there drinking. What's wrong? Thought you were going fishing. There's all these square things in the way on the jetty, and he just looked at me and smiled. <laughs> hey, hey, Tommy, his buddy's boat next over. Tommy was in it. Tommy made his money. Oh, he yeah, did the cra- Tommy did the crazy shit. He's dead now. Tommy Venn was his name. That man had hands the size of a fucking basketball. He was a... Holy shit. Yeah, he almost went pro... Uh, he was a catcher. You oh, know? shit, really? Yeah. And... uh he always, yeah, Tommy, Tommy, my dad's, mm, we don't go near none of that shit. And I never, I didn't realize until I got a little older that money that was involved. Oh, yeah. And Tommy's like, fucking soon as he heard that shit, yeah, yeah boom, 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 he cranking them engines up. Oh, yeah, he had a pain to go right load there. that bitch up. Oh, and yeah. he, I said, where'd Tommy go? Yeah. Two be- days later, he's back. Yeah. Pulls backs in, ties up the marina. And I didn't realize back then, you know, he fucking loaded up, oh, ran yeah. that shit over here, probably through one of the, in- Jupiter or oh, Paul, yeah. one of the inlets. Got a full pay there. God. It's been a good talk, man. Yeah, We've talked about a lot of stuff. It never ends, especially when you get an old fart like me and it's just, you can find just one <laughs> day out of each month of your life and go, yeah, that was some weird shit we did, you know? Yeah. Like sitting here where we're at in your home, this was swamp. It was deer and... The cow pasture was right up the road. Yeah. 
We had a lot of fun times out of this place was crazy. We come out here, we'd hunt rattlesnakes. That's crazy. Do literally, well, back then, dude, we're talking, we're in, we're in the sixties, you know, 1970, I was 10 years old. Yeah. I'm 1970, 71. You're riding your bicycle down a friggin' sidewalk in the neighborhood. You got a 22 rifle on your back <laughs> and the cops are like, Hey guys, where are you going? Going rabbit hunting. Good. Catch one for me. Yeah. yeah, yeah. Back different then, world. Different, different world. world, bro. Matt, you could totally do that different today. World. <laughs> for sure. Nowadays, it's like, get that kid away from that gun. I'm like, no, 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 no. Teach him how to use the thing properly. And that's, I'm one of them guys that know. Teach him how to use it properly and be safe with it. Because once they learn the safety side of it, he don't need to own it. But if he ever has to get around it or deal with it, he knows what to do and what not to do. Yeah. Because there's, that's... Gotta be careful. <laughs> well, fuck. Go to Tampa. Hell, there's some 14 year old kid up here in the city around here running around with freaking nine millimeters and 40 millimeter, you know, the Glocks, mm-hmm. the stolen stuff, and they're robbing stuff. And I'm like, man, that kid don't need to be handling that gun. You're not. A, it's, you gotta be use it for the right purposes. Yeah. Just be responsible and shit. It's so much fun. Yeah. For a kid, take them out and let them ping, ping, and shoot little pellet guns and stuff. Yeah. Now I'm into the air rifles. The air rifles shooting the iguanas. Oh, really? Because the iguanas down here, the invasive, they're totally out of control. Yeah. <clears throat> that all started after Hurricane Andrew, Andrew in Miami when the big, kind of like aviaries for birds, only they were raising the iguanas, all got tore down in the hurricane. And all of them got out? And all of them got out. Oh, shit. And that's how the iguana stuff started in Miami. And it's just worked up now. Well, probably you go out in your. I'm sure you see. Oh them. no, we have them out here. They're everywhere. Yeah. No, they're they're damn good insane. eating. Really? Damn good. Ate it once. Now that was that, but that was in Costa Rica. I ate it once in Costa Rica. I did a lot of crazy shit down there. Um, but really good eating. They call it chicken of the trees. And there's a lot of local guys around here that shoot them, sell them. Um, but they want us. They want you to kill them. Yeah. Because. They're eating all the flower stuff. They're eating all our songbird eggs, like your mockingbirds and all, the babies. Mm-hmm. They're like, no, they're vegetarians. That thing will go up in that nest and just eat, eat every everything. one of them babies. Oh, yeah. That's a mean critter right there. And it's like Florida. It's just, it's dying. You watch it and you're like, they're killing everything. Yeah. Get rid of them. And there's guys out there that get paid big money to go out to the golf courses and the public um, parks and stuff with air rifles and take them out so yeah that's just, you got it i mean about as close as i want to get to a gun anymore i don't really been around it done it you know did all yeah. the crazy shit with it and it's that's okay i mean you all go do that i don't want to fucking be a part of it <laughs> i got my little air rifle i'll shoot no, a yeah, lizard give it to the neighbor because the, the, the latina them people they'll go down there with a truckload a bucket full of lizards and they're like gracias gracias no problem because they're going to cook them up because they eat a lot of that stuff Mm-hmm. And it's good eating. It's not people think it's a lizard. It's no different eating gator tail. Yeah. Which I don't like. I don't like gator tail. I really didn't enjoy the iguana. It was okay, but it wasn't something I'd rave about. People rave about gator tail. And I'm like, hey, that's I nice. just, I, I don't like the lizard. I just, some foods I'm just not I don't like it. Yeah, yeah, yeah. It just ain't me. I don't like yeah. lizard. So we're hitting an hour and a half right now. Wow. If anything, we can come back and uh, get into some of the other stuff. Next anytime, time. anytime. We can shoot the for breeze sure. more. Yeah. Cool. Sounds Maybe good. Um, this has been Thanks neat. for coming on. This is neat. Thanks. Definitely. Thank you, man. I enjoyed myself. It's uh, it's such a just, it's a crazy world. Yeah. And it's cool to hook up with somebody younger than me that sees it, you know, the way y'all are seeing it, because you guys aren't blind. And I mean, it's nice to know that. Yeah. You know, and it's, I just, God, man, something's got to give. And. And I, I'm, I get to now, I'm to the point to where what's going to give is we're all going to wake up to a bunch of fucking nuclear missiles landing all around us. And it's like, fuck, man. Yeah. And we been, had it made. Could have been so much better. It, it could be so much better. Yeah. And that's my only thing now is like, God, man, you're ruining it. You give these kids a chance. Yeah. I, I think, I think that, you know, if we just stopped looking at everything as just making a profit here and this and that and having so much control over everything. Mm-hmm. If we just kind of let people be like at the end of the day, regardless of where you're from, mm-hmm. everyone at the base of it just wants to be like happy 
live comfortable lives, not have to kill themselves to do anything. I don't need to be rich. Yeah. Comfortable. Yeah. And if you want to work harder, I don't, I don't, I would never demonize success, you Me, know, mm-mm. but when, when your success gets to the point where you're recreating when you start, the world itself, when, there you go. That's, when you, when you start hurting people because of your success, the yeah. little guy, it's you beyond. just lost every bit of respect for me, and I yeah. think no, put just, it into it. You know, eventually, hopefully, it doesn't get some nuclear bombs. But um, yeah, no, thanks I for worry. coming on. So, you see me chewing now. I'm going to chew on his knicker. Uh, same, same. Yeah, I, at the end of the day, it's just. But we can't spend our whole days worrying about this stuff, no. you know, and that's, it's that's, I think a lot about that now. Like, you know, when I get in that boat and crank that key and take off in that water, there's no better place to be. Yeah. And if you've never, for those of you listening, if you've never been out in the ocean in a boat, find some time somehow to go do it because you want to find, you want to find some peace. You go out there, shut that motor off. And sit with your buddies and shoot the breeze, you know, or go fishing yeah. and get off hard land. Get it. It's it's just, dude, it's food for the soul. Yeah. It's so, it changes you. It's tranquil. It, it changes you. Yeah. I'll go out there and pray sometimes, you know. And some people, I don't pray much. I'm not really, I'm not a religious guy. But if I want to talk to them, and you get, get out, out there, there, it's like, <laughs> wow, this feels kind of one-on-one, you know. And yeah. It's, it's just, it brings you that peace. Yeah. And that's all of it. Like I said earlier, it's just, man, please, somebody bring some peace to this situation. Yeah. Because got old guys like me, look, I'm, I'm done. And that's like when I see these kids nowadays on the water in boats and stuff. And, and, and they're like, we remember, we know who you are. Dad told us you're the guy that used to go run around the state fighting for the fishermen. I said, I was fighting for you guys. You own it now. I'm just borrowing it from you now. Because when I was younger, I owned it. And now we've handed it off. We've handed off the ball. Here you go. The ball is yours. But it's like up to us to still to look, to look and go, don't nobody mess with the, leave them alone. Let them do their thing. Yeah. And it's like every, like you were saying, the control. You can't do this. You can't do that. There's a law for everything. And I'm like, my God, man. Yeah. Cut me some fucking slack. I just want to go fishing. Yeah. People aren't aware there's just fucking laws and laws and laws and other lawyers. And I'm like, dude, y'all need to take a fucking break. Yeah. You know, there's enough control. We we got this. Yeah. Everybody want to own you. And I'm like, mm. yeah, at the end of the day, like, it's just every everything's fucked up from just people vying for power. Power. And, and. Fucking power. And I'm like, what the fuck? You can't take it with you when you go. What good's it going to do you now? Yeah. Well, you're the big badass. Okay, you're the big badass. Calm the fuck down. Leave me alone. Yeah, I'll give you. You know, I'll, what? What do you want to hear? You're the bad motherfucker. You are a bad motherfucker. Yeah. Now go away. Leave me the fuck alone. Yeah. Because that's like, at the end of the day, it's just like some like <laughs> narcissistic ego that's behind all of that image that they. And want. Most of the time, they're assholes. Yeah. Because they're miserable. I mean, like you know, they they they. How they could feed you be happy them. wanting to fuck with people all the time? And I'm like. Why don't you go try to find some happiness? Yeah. But then there's some people that just can't. I got a brother, man. That guy, he ain't, I'm over, he ain't happy. He ain't never going to be happy. Yeah. I'm a fucking one hateful dude right there. Yeah. I'm talking about, and he, if he had the opportunity, he'd take me out today. <laughs> and I'm talking about my brother. Yeah. He ain't happy. Yeah. Some people just. I definitely think it would be a benefit if before you go into elected office or whatever else, you're required to do like two, three grams of mushrooms just right before you walk in. Just micro to like, dose. Yeah, just to just to like show you something. It's beyond, a reality yeah, check. Break your perspective. And then like, you know, then you can go in and like, at least like, you know, there's a there's a chance. <laughs> Dude, here I am, Mr. Oh, by the way, I'm 21 years sober. Okay. But I look at that and go, oh, hell yeah. Yeah. Because been there, done that. And there is something about that reality check. And, it, and and it's, to be honest with you, there's been a few times during my sobriety when I'll be laying in bed and go, man, you know what? I could go out and fucking jump that fence. Probably eat a couple mushrooms, maybe get a renewed look at things. But then I'm like, no, 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 don't fuck with your sobriety. Yeah. You know, because I'm very strict about just, yeah. I don't, my mind doesn't need to be fucked with anymore. Yeah. I mess with it enough, you know. But that reality check, what a wake up. Oh yeah, and your sure. average person who hasn't like you, I'd love to see. Yeah, you have to go do this. 
Yeah. And take them out somewhere to do a farm or something. They just run around, go have fun. Oh, talk, yeah. talk to the fucking to butterfly or something. Just yeah. like, just stare out, you know. Go talk with the butterflies. Fuck around with the dragonflies. Yeah. You're going to have a blast doing it. I feel like half the people, if they were required to do it and they did it, they probably wouldn't want to be a politician anymore. <laughs> you know, because they <laughs> they'd look and go, this is fucking cool. They wouldn't want the power anymore. They would just, it would dissolve their ego to a point where it's like they, they break out of that mental pattern that they needed they're locked in that box they're yeah locked in that box yeah, it's all they see it's all they see and like everyone under them they're just kind of numbers they're they're puzzle pieces and they're in their game and that's just, they don't know the real they don't they're missing out on the real yeah. world they're missing out on a real life yeah. it's all they see is chess pieces chess pieces and money and i'm like you don't get it bro you yeah. miss the fucking boat yeah you're gonna die as like more miserable than anyone fucking with everything you got everything but you're gonna be miserable yeah and that's like my buddies that are super wealthy these guys they know they get it yeah. they get it you know of course they, they they've they've got they're successful because they grind it dude they're they willing to fucking grind it but they get it and they don't just it, it's not they don't care about the control yeah they they disagree with it 100 percent. they're like no fuck that guy yeah that guy's a dickhead stay away from him come on over here let's go have fun yeah and that's what it's have some fun yeah cuz you know if you're if you already have 100 million dollars do you need the second 100 you need you need the third 100 you really don't it, no to me i look like, and go no you really don't but if you want to go make it god bless you because that that's your right to go do it yeah of course share that shit yeah and that's what i do like there are a lot of wealthy people well my mom my one buddy his mother the money that a woman has I mean, it's sick money, dude. We're talking billions. Yeah. But that woman gives more money to the kids' hospitals, Tallahassee, the Arnold Palmer Hospital, all for the kids' stuff. Yeah. And that's where I look, and I'm like, there you go. Yeah. That's what you do. You help the children, you can't go wrong, man. Yeah. You can't fucking go wrong. Yeah. And she'll look right out and say, I got more money. I don't know what to do with all this money. Yeah. So I just give it to these hospitals for these kids because I think it's the greatest thing in the world. And I'm like, hell yeah. Yeah. That's and awesome. she's saving kids' lives. These, these, you know, the medicines and these doctors that are taking care of kids that got, you know, there's a hundred kids in the world with that disease, but this one doctor knows how to take care of it and manage it with that kid. And it's her money that's making sure that kid gets taken care of. And I'm like, God, that's awesome. Yeah. Fuck yeah. So philanthropist yeah, that's an awesome the note. real deal yeah you know it makes you wonder does 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 he wonder how much money elon i've always wondered you know because he's not one to brag most of these people don't they won't brag about it i picked her brain about it one day because her kid told me says god if you only knew how much my money my mom gives and i'm like really and i started talking to her and it made me wonder you know like a guy like musk of course the whole world imagine being him where everybody's constantly i mean fucking constantly trying to like, give me something give me something. it's got to be like that yeah maybe i'm wrong but no, I, th I just I look think and once go, you're at that point yeah it, just it everybody wants a fucking piece of it and it makes me wonder you know well, who does he donate to you know yeah i'll bet he helps kids out he's got to have something to do with helping kids if he didn't i'd go dude you're fucked up you need to do this. you need yeah. to get somebody to the kids hospital you would hope that you would hope that when you have that much money you know you're giving makes you it away. makes you wonder you, you know? hope you hope you hope that with anyone that has that much money you know it's yeah, how fucking how much do you need and do you need to be greedy when you have that much yeah it's like take care of others man yeah you know the little the guys at the, these guys at the red lights honking well when you go there and they got the sign i roll down the window go been there done that dude here have a bottle of water yeah and they look and they they grab that bottle of water oh, and yeah. go you can't live you can live without money you can't live without that. Yeah. Because I can go fucking out here and scout. I can eat lizards with a bottle of water. And yeah. they love me for it, dude. And that's oh, yeah. what I do. You spare a buck? Here, one bottle of water. Because I keep a case of water on the seat of my truck. A bottle of water. Yeah. And they always thank you. Yeah. No problem. It's only 90 degrees out. You're standing in the middle of a fucking road. Yeah, you're begging. Yeah. I mean. I, I never did that stuff. That was, I did other stupid things, guys. <laughs> Yeah. You know, I didn't have, I was homeless and it was bad and I needed money. I did whatever I had to do to get it. Yeah. Crazy yeah, survive. shit. Crazy shit. But we can all turn it around. It can be turned around. 
And that was a that was a one on that was a one on one thing. That, yeah. That's it. That's this awesome. is it. This is it. You have reached the bottom. Yeah. And that's a funky feeling. And there's so many millions of people out there who've been there, you know, and done I should talk with these people, you know. That's those are the people you need to talk with when you're trying to get through situations. Yeah. And it's like, man, I ain't fucking hard to do, but really pretty easy once you just go, this is it. I'm fucking done. Yeah. But you got to mean it. If you mean it, you're good. You're good to go. Let's move on. Yeah. And here we are today, hanging out with cool dudes. That's awesome. Talking shit. That's awesome. <laughs> All right, we'll end on that note. All Thank right. you for coming on, Danny. Um, Anytime. I'll come back. You want me back, do. brother? I you definitely just, do. I'll, I'll come hang with you. Um, do you have, do you want to put your company out there, what you do? Um, No. Okay. I'm good. Then we're good. I hate, look, <laughs> I, I'm good because I'm, I'm basically, I'm semi-retired. Yeah. And I have my regulars okay. that fish me, that I'm good throughout the year. But if somebody calls me, I, it's a small loop that I, that I let, that it, they'll call me and say, so-and-so told me to call you. Yeah. I know they're cool people. I'm yeah. not going to have a dick on my boat and they're going to tip well, which is, you know, fucking tips, which you live off of. But. No, I'm I'm good. Okay. I'm like, <laughs> I always like giving the option. Oh, love you for it, but no, I'm good. All right. Well, thank you again. <laughs> <laughs> we'll definitely be back soon. <laughs>